All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Drive Chat. Um, earlier, I didn't make mention that I will be chatting with individuals disrupting uh, the marketplace, and of course, individuals that are shaping the future. And of course, it is a great privilege always to talk to somebody with a lot of wisdom in a particular space. And also, when you meet those individuals, it's how you interact with them in order to share knowledge and information, because we are brought, we are one another's keeper, right? So right now. It is the second episode of Drive uh, Chat, and I did um, release the other episode. If you missed it, I will share the link in the comment section just for you guys to appreciate the last conversation I had with another remarkable CEO who was sharing the insight on how, uh, as Africans, we need to think innovative. I think that was a quite a very um, elaborative conversation we had. But now, I am privileged again to be in, um, I, I call him my boss, that's just for me but yeah I mean his car yeah so normally on drive chat I just uh, jump into people's car not just any random people by the way these are people that are doing extraordinary thing and it's important that we learn from them um, and as a new as a young generation we need to tap into the wisdom and grow ourselves as well all right without further ado let's just dive into I don't want to bore you because you definitely want to listen to this conversation ladies and gentlemen introducing Zero DK. <laughs> I usually try to pronounce it right. Yes, you are live on the chat, uh, drive chat, and of course, I'm just gonna let him to introduce himself. I know it is wrong for a moderator, for example, to try to let the guest introduce themselves, but because there's certain things that I'm still learning from him that I would want him to mention in his introduction, just as I also pick him from uh, what he will be making mention. But yes, just a bit bio about yourself uh, to some of the people that might not know you. Uh, Tsiron Jiken is a, a filmmaker by a career, um, studied film. Um, I am a mindset coach by calling. Um, and then I'm a serial entrepreneur and a philanthropist. So I make money and I keep money. <laughs> <laughs> best believe it, best believe it, I've seen that. Um, Let's speak into um, the entrepreneurial side. I'm going to yeah. touch on the entire, but let's speak into the entrepreneurship because we are in a space where even the head of state is more enterprising because they're encouraging entrepreneurship. Yeah. But why is this? Because a lot of people, we've seen a lot of seminars that a lot of talk about entrepreneurship. Why is this a big deal? It's a big deal because um, entrepreneurship gives freedom. Birth freedom, I say it all the time. Um, one of the things that we do not have which is the essence of the God is time, you know, and, and we, you understand that when you're in a, in a corporate job, one thing that you do not have is time because you work on a clock. You know what time you have to be at work, you know what time you have to leave, you know if you have to do extra time and all those type of things. Entrepreneurship gives you the freedom to run your own time, you know, and, and, and do it. And yeah, I tell people all the time, an entrepreneur can work 24 hours around the clock or can rest 24 hours around the clock, you know, and then you know how much income you want to make and you make sure that you create that money, Yeah. you know, compared to, oh, you just have a salary, you have a fixed income every month. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you're, you're talking about, but yeah, um, j just speaking into it, because I know many people say entrepreneurship, you need to have capital, you need to have liquidity for you to begin a particular business, and people are finding it hard to find that, basically that capital, but is it capital a real issue for somebody to become an entrepreneur? And maybe the question would be, is everybody an entrepreneur? No. no. Everybody's not an entrepreneur. There are a few intrapreneurs. There's a wannabe entrepreneur. You know, there are, you know, walking entrepreneurs, all type of entrepreneurs out there. But I think the main thing for you to start your journey, because everything starts with the beginning, the first step, is uh, to have the vision. There's two things that create an entrepreneur. The product and the service. If you don't have those two things, what type of entrepreneur you want to be? A product and a service. You know, most successful entrepreneurs you see out there have a product and then they have a service. You know, so they sell something that take care of a, of a need. Yeah, cool stuff. Um, I, I didn't make mention about uh, liquidity and capital to start a business. Is is that what one needs to start a business journey? To start a business journey, I say it again: the vision first of all. Most people get stuck because they don't. I don't have a capital. How am I going to do? 
example, do you even have a business plan? Do you have a great vision for you to start? Most of the time, when you when you're really ready and you have your vision, you have a product and it's defined. Trust me, the capital is going to show up. Yeah. Um. Now, Zambia particularly, the population is young, but of course, in terms of poverty levels, it's also quite shocking that a lot of people. Um, are living in abject poverty and it's a real issue on the ground people are suffering and they keep looking on to the government for solution uh, which in many cases is not always the issue because people then uh, fend for themselves because they're able to do and navigate a, a, around whatever they're doing within their community or their marketplace um, you have started the market very well Zambia in particular is not a new thing to you um, I think what would be some of the pain points that you think this country is grappling with when it comes to entrepreneurship uh, uh, comfortability. I think the young people are super comfortable, um, and I think uh, the mindset is not at a place where it needs to be. I think there should be a mindset shift, you know, in, mostly in the youth, for them to understand that um, the government is not going to do it for us. Um, I'll give you a simple example. You know, I was shocked three years ago when I came to Zambia for the first time, and uh, I went to stores, to shops at night like around 9 30 10 and i'll get a couple of shops that are open none of them are owned by zambians so we just let's just be real yeah. you know they open at 0605 and they close at, at 23. you know but the zambians the few zambians who own shop yeah. 17, 17 18 they they're gone back so at 9 30. exactly they come back <laughs> the next year at 9 30. I, th I think I'm, I'm 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 this is a, this is also a thought i had um uh, at, at some point uh, when i was being picked up to do a particular sh a show in the morning at 04.30 the shops were literally closed at uh, CBD mm -hmm. nobody was working no. at 04.00 you, so you can't get food if you're traveling for example yes, you sir. just want to find a place where you can get something to eat at that particular time yes, sir. so we are missing on market opportunity yes, as sir. a country yes, sir. and this maybe it could be the biggest problem we have in terms of growing the economy don't you think? I agree, totally agree with you, you know, I, think, I think we have to get out of our comfort zone and we have to tell ourselves when you're an entrepreneur you the only thing the thing that gives you money is the difference you make from the next business you know if the next business close at 17 you close at 19 you have two hours to make more money than the other business so it's a mindset thing i think we have to get to a place where we educate ourselves and understand how people who are successful and, and, and cultures who are successful live the indians hard-working people you know the rwandese hard-working people and they're successful, you know, they're changing their communities, even in Zambia, they're doing the things that we Zambians are not doing. So I think I think it's time for us to get back to the drawing board and ask ourselves why are we not successful. We're not, it's not because we don't have money, no. It's just because we have the lack of, we have we have that that wrong mentality, you know, as a people. On, on, and, and again, it's a, it was well packaged and given to us to feel like, okay, you go to school, you graduate, you get a, a, a white collar job and you're okay. But now is the time where the rest of the world, as a global village, is, is flo flooding and making tons of money through entrepreneurship. All of us have to get on the bandwagon and, and change our mindset and make it happen. Before I shift this conversation, um, many people might argue because the reason why they might not be working later hours because the environment, the, you know, security, for example. Mm. Uh, so would you say that also the authority have got a role to play to make sure that they provide security? To the people so that they, that environment is conducive enough for them to trade even in late hours i think that's an excuse i truly believe and i'm just going to be straightforward i think it's an excuse because zambian is pri the privilege of zambia is, is the peacefulness of its people zambians are good people zambians are really really the hospitable people i'm not saying there's no bad people in zambia or there's no gun gunpoint or whatever but i think if you truly want to do it the way you present your business and the way you connect with the people in the community, people will protect you while you're up there at night. You know, people will show up and say, oh, no, nobody's going to touch this person. The government has its, its own share, you know, share responsibility to play. We don't want to wait on them to do that. But the way you create the business, the way you bring the community to the business, the business becomes a community business and everybody protects you. Even if you stay there 24 hours, people will be there with you to make sure that your business is safe. Great stuff. Um, shifting to another issue, humanitarian, which is a big issue. And I think you're very passionate about helping people. And part of the the, the cause, and I know um, mindset change is also part of, sometimes you use 
uh, platforms like change helping young people change their minds in terms of how they think by giving back but also on top of that you do charge to train these people right but it's it, it's, it's not about that it's the passion that you have and the drive that you have that you have seen that the, the africa has got the potential to have a drive uh, an economy that is leading the world in many areas mm -hmm. um, but just let's speak into um i think before i dive into many nigerian i just want to speak into uh the mindset change you've interacted with so many people what do you think is another problem that we need, maybe need to work on as a, as, a, as, a, as young people and as a people in, in Zambia. The young people in Zambia, I say I spoke about it, the fact that they were very comfortable, they 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 are very entitled. You know, they think it's going to be given to them. You know, um, I, I, again, a part of that, the Zambian people are very teachable. You know, they're open to learn, but they have to work on on, on their inability to to hustle. I've been to I've been very privileged to travel in a lot of African countries. Trust me, you go to East Africa, you go to uh, uh, West Africa. <laughs> the young people are hustling over there. You know, Ghana, Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. You know, Togo, yeah. uh, Cote d'Ivoire. And these are, are the economies which are doing much better. Well, better. Yeah. 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 Those guys hustle. Like Nigeria is they don't joke. Like those guys don't sleep. You know, and they're successful. You could see the difference. You know, and uh, you could see even the difference when they come here. They look at like, wow, you guys are always sleeping. You know, so. We have to get out of our comfort zone and say, you know what? We want to ma want to catch other economies that want to be better, you know, and uh, and it's going to change. I, and I think it's exposure. Um, we need to be exposed to those type of things. That the information that we get from those countries is uh, I don't know if it, I don't want to say the wrong information, but we choose what information to receive. You know, if 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 I'm if I want to be great, what, like when I was struggling, because again, guys, I, I wasn't just born with any silver spoon in my mouth. I was broke. I came from a poor family. I was raised by a single mother. Never knew my father, but I was hungry. I was hungry. I wanted to break the curse of, of poverty. I wanted to break the curse of not having a father. I wanted to break a lot of curses, and I, I decided to say, I'm not going to. This is not going to be me, right? Yeah, I'm, go, yeah, I'm not going yeah. to create another that's generation. Of, that's yes, root, yeah. another generation of poverty is yeah. not going to come out yeah. of me, and that's how I, I became hungry. Yeah. You know, and I started doing the things that other people were not doing for me to be where I am yeah. today. So. And connecting with the right people so that when the great idea the vision the product and the service come people already know that i have an integrity they can trust me yeah. you know so again that comfortability is something that we have to fight in this county and, and start looking at trying to be better just to be honest do you think that many people are too humble and not aggressive on many yes, issues yeah. and yeah. humbleness can be mislaid yeah. as a yeah. as a weakness okay. would you yes we are in we a are. sense we're super nice it's not even funny like at a fault you know it's, some might say that's good but <laughs> we are, it's good for it's good for the peace of the country yeah but uh, when it comes to entrepreneurship and uh, and getting resources we we, we fall asleep when we need to be yeah very so good. we need to be hustling okay so, yeah. no i think i'm not gonna uh, let you speak i don't know you charge you <laughs> you charge for this kind of talk but but yeah courtesy of i, th I think you should sponsor this <laughs> this particular episode but yeah but thank you so much and i, and I just don't want to get into uh, the detail but i think if you want to uh, engage him or uh, learn more i think i will share uh, where you can find him or the space where you can find him uh, just to engage but also uh the last part is humanitarian and i think fewer people that have made it uh, and i think the african story is the same almost everybody like we have the similar situation of struggle you get the point but mm -hmm. it's those who are willing to put in the work that try to break that, uh, that, that, that uh, and I don't always say that maybe it's a generational curse or something, but yeah. But but you also, when you made it, probably you would think that oh, he's just gonna enjoy his life now. But you ended up now and send the community to help that other person that might be going through the similar situation you went through. Uh, tell us uh, how was, why do you, and I, and, I, and I don't know how best I can put it, as in why is helping other people uh, important for you? Helping other people is, is life because I always say, you know, and it may sound cliche to other people, but we are all we are all energies, interconnected energies, right? We bleed all red. It's, it's, yeah. it's the same white, blue, yeah. Indian. We have the same blood. We have we we we're all humans. So um, for me, it's personal. My journey is personal, and I've I've connected myself with people who have the same values. I told you earlier on, I was raised by a single mother hard-working woman who just passed away you know a few months ago um, she instilled those values in us she instilled the values of giving giving to her was 
like the name even out of nothingness you know so um, she made sure that we saw the importance of not being selfish with the resources so when i was growing up even as a poor young struggling young adult i just wanted to make resources so that i could build resources you know so now when i became successful enough wow what a blessing to be able to bless people you know yeah. so um giving is giving is a key to if if two or three people care a little bit more the world will be a better place yeah speaking about which uh part of what you've not touched in is the health sector which you're so passionate about yes, yeah just tell us a bit about that i am um one of the things in africa that we struggle with a lot is the health sector because um, mostly in the rural areas when the people are the people don't have the means how do you think they will take care of themselves you know and i think the foundation of of creating wealth is health <laughs> you know so when you when you're healthy you're going to be wealthy if you're healthy educated wealth is going to come you know so um when i came back home um the first thing i wanted to tackle was the health sector in rural area because in the city people have the means to go to hospital in the rural area those who are really abandoned they don't have it so that's how we created our first free clinic in the, in the health center yeah. you know fully like a state-of-the-art lab you know pharmacy everything is great and it's free yeah. consultation free. free medication free yeah so um and and it was a blessing because by the time i came to zambia and i saw how the people were struggling in mongole to get health services i was like no this is impossible somebody yeah. has to do something yeah. You know, and I couldn't, again, as I said, I couldn't wait on the government or CDF or whatever. Yeah. I, had, I had to call, make a couple of calls to my, my good friends and say, guys, this is where I am right now. This is what's going on. How do we do this? And we came together, put our resources together, and the, 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 the health center has been open now for three months. I think four months now, we are running this four months. And the numbers are overwhelming. So the need is there. The need is there. But that's not, we're not going to stop there. You know, we want to take it to the next level. We want to make sure that the community is healthy. We want to educate the community. Um, and then make sure that they start creating wealth so that we are not just an Africa of poor yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. We're not just an Africa of, oh, send 35 cents a day uh, and the flies around the children, oh, mouths of the children. That's not, that's not Africa. Crazy, yeah. We are going to change. We are yeah, changing that yeah, Africa yeah. as Africans. Yeah. You know, and if more people come together with initiatives like what we did, trust me, I'm not a perfect human being, but I just decided not to buy a lamborghini for yeah, example yeah, <laughs> yeah you know? which you could have afforded but <laughs> I, you had to get yeah exactly so no, we appreciate that we no, appreciate no, no, no. Trust no, I, me. yeah I, for me i feel like it, it is a, is a mandate and and if all of us people who have been privileged with success just say you know what we're going to do this the world will be a better place yeah no thank you so much um i think one key takeaway there health is wealth, health is wealth. very important mindset change is something that we need to definitely put as a 911 emergency yes, for the zambian people yes, sir. Being humble, we need to be aggressive. We aggressive. need aggressive doesn't mean you need to be pushing people around. No, no aggressive is just knowing what you want to do, yeah. making sure that you do it and deliver, the deliverables are done. Yeah. And I, I think um, just for other people who want to find you to learn more, where will they find you? Are you on social media? I am on social media. Yeah. I'm very active on, on Instagram and Facebook. Cyril Jiken is my Facebook. Um, I'm, I'm active on LinkedIn as well, um, Twitter as well. So I'm, I'm active on all social media. Um, but don't send me a message and say hi. No, no, no. Send me a message. Hi, Mr. Njiken. I saw you on Danji's page and I will, I'm interested in that. And then we can have a conversation because most young people send me a message. Hi, hello. I don't reply to that. Being I, intentional. Yeah, you have to be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that you, preach. you have to be intentional. You know, intentional. Get no, my anyway. attention. Yeah. Get my attention by sending me a message that will make me say, oh, wow, I'm interested in working with this young person. You know, and, and, and we have a lot of ventures that we can. You know plug young people and then even if it's just one or two free session for mindset change you're not going to regret it right so um hit me up on social media let's do this and i appreciate you for the work you're doing Danny. I, I like the fact that you're active out there on top of all the gifts that you have you still find time to you know just do the things yeah. that you have to do yeah. to, to open the mind no, thank i appreciate you. you for that i'm on board that's what i did i did not just comment hi <laughs> I was very intentional. I said, can I come and do the interview exactly. so that we can actually have some information out there? But definitely get in touch with him and learn more. Um, of course, he has trained great people, different institutions that uh, that are certified, by the way. Um, uh, great stuff. I think check out his page and get to see what some of the things that he does talk about and what he's passionate about. It has been me, Danji, Duncan, Simwanza, as I like to call myself in Danji brand. 
thank you so much for watching i will leave uh, also the link of his page in the comment section for some of you who might be struggling to find the page so that you can just ah, you never know you know what they say you never know i said it i said it all right shout out. i wanted to make this two minutes ten minutes but it was the conversation was too good to reach 20 minutes thank you so much bonus 10 bye